my name is Hido and welcome to the Pantheon where today potentially a real card don't really know it looks like a leak maybe it is maybe it isn't but it seems like a sort of design that magic would do and it's a dragon spirit <laughs> terrible image quality but this is Kyodan soul of Kamigawa four mana for a three three with flash and flying when it's the battlefield another type permanent gains indestructible for as long as you control Kyodai. I've got it wrong, it's Kyodai, not Dan. What a fool I am. But then you can play one of each color. It gets plus five side until end of turn. So this makes it a five color commander. We've seen this quite a few times from Wizards. They had to chuck mana symbols all over the place and make it into whatever color commander they want it to be. But it's quite a cool card. That nice protection ability, well, we can use it in a couple of interesting ways. So hopefully this is a real card. Do you know what is real, though? My YouTube channel. <laughs> Come and subscribe to it. It's going to be making videos like this for every single legendary creature ever printed. So come and join me on the journey. It'll be quite fun. Or maybe it won't. It's up to you. Anyway, without further ado, let's have a look at my top five for Kyodai. And in number five, we've got some spirit tribal synergies. Drug Skull Captain, three mana for a 2-2 two, two flying. Other spirit creatures you control get Swamp Swan and have Hexproof. So with this commander, because of that pump ability on the five color requ requirement thing, I would go down a sort of very aggressive route, wanting to really smash people's faces in. And, you know, having a bit of protection from Hexproof and an extra 1-1 one, one is really, really powerful. And, you know, a flying 2-2 two, two by itself can pressure some Planeswalkers. So this card, quite good overall. Then we got Selfless Spirit. You know, a protection is built into this deck. It's what our command does to something else. So let's protect all of our other creatures as well. Selfless Spirit, 2 mana, 2-1, two, flying, sacrifice it, creatures you control gain indestructible until end of turn. That's quite nice, you know, keeps whatever we want alive, and, you know, it's a nice cheap spirit bodice. If we go that spirit sort of direction, this is a good card to have. Then there's Gr Drug Skull Reinforcements, 4 mana, 2-2, two, two, spirit soldier with melee. So whenever this creature attacks, it gets Swamp Swan until end of turn. For each opponent, you attacked this combat. Other well, spirits you control have melee. So our commander will have melee. Oh, quite nice. Best Smash Brothers game, by the way. Prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to spirits you control. So this is great for any sort of damage-based board wipes. Keeps our commander alive, so the indestructible thing it's targeting keeps it alive. This is a nice target for our commander, to be honest. So, you know, any uh, Blasphemous Axe, things like that, won't affect our commander or any of our other spirits. And then we've got Skyfire Kirin. A card I don't really see all that much, but it's quite cool. Four mana for a 3-3 flyer. Whenever you play a spirit or a arcane spell, you may gain control of target creature with that spell's converted mana cost until end of turn. So this is quite good. We can flash in our commander, steal a four cost, you know, whenever we want. Get that sol solemn simulacrum in response to a board wipe. And we can make whatever we steal indestructible as well. That's quite nice. So really cool card. And, you know, you just don't see it often. So I thought I'd include it here. Which brings me on to number four. And at number four, we've got Conqueror's Flail. I talked about how I want this commander to be quite aggressive because of that plus five, plus five, easily get out of control. Conqueror's Flail is a great way of doing that. Two mana for an equipment. A quick creature gets plus one for each color among permanents you control. Yes, our commander is only white, but we're going to have a bunch of green, blue, black, red permanents knocking about. So our commander can easily get plus five, plus five for just two mana. As long as it attached to a creature, your opponents can't cast spells during your turn. So that can allow us to really get in for some mean damage and our opponents can't like path or swords to, egg, uh, swords to exile. Swords to plowshares or path to exile our commander, you know, on our turn. So we can swing in with, you know, relative ease. And then we've got Berserk. One green mana for an instant cast Berserk only before the combat damage step. Tag creature gains trample and gets Berserk so until end of turn where X is its power. At the beginning of the next end step, destroy that creature if attached, uh, if it's attacked this turn. So this is a removal spell. I love uh, the way you can remove things with it. If our opponent's creature attacks, you know, you do it in mid combat. Yes, it buffs them for a turn, but then destroy it at end of turn. But our commander can give something indestructible. So we can do it on whatever creature is indestructible. It goes to destroy it. It can't. 
Or if our commanders like become an 8-8, eight, eight, we can easily make it into a 16-8 and finish someone off. Yes, our commander dies, but we can just flash it in again. Attack a world render. Well, our commander is a dragon. 7 mana, 6-4, flying trample. Whenever a dragon you control attacks against double strike until end of turn. Double strike means it does regular damage and first strike damage, so we're going to be dealing double damage. Shocking from the name I know. Then Boros Charm, two mana for an instant. Choose one, it deals four damage to target player or planeswalker. Permits you control get indestructible until end of turn, or target creature gains double strike until the end of the Whoa! So the four damage, not that great, but the indestructible and the double strike can do real heavy players in this deck. The indestructible, probably what you're going to be casting it for most of the time. Really great card. Then there's Duelist Heritage, three mana for an enchantment. Whenever one or more creatures attack, you may have attacking a target creature, gain double strike and turn of turn. So our commander gaining double strike. Well, okay, let's pay 10 mana. Give plus 10 plus 10, somebody's dead. He he he, ha ha ha. And our commander has flying as well. Then a chrome as well, excellent protection spell. Four mana instant, choose one. If you control a commander when you cast this, you may choose both. Creature control gave flying vigilance and double strike until end turn. Wow, that's going to kill someone. And creatures you control gain lifelink, indestructible protection from all colors until end turn. Also going to kill someone. This is just a brilliant spell for just wiping out your opponents. Speaking of wiping things out, there's World Slayer. Five mana for an equipment, and every creature deals combat damage to a player. Destroy all permanents other than World Slayer. Well, we can choose something with our commander to stay alive because it gives it indestructible. Yes, our commander will die, but we can put it, you know, keep a big creature alive. We've got a big creature and a World Slayer. By God, we're going to win the game. Then let's have a look at my number three pick. At number three, we've got Gigantha, the Wellspring. Four mana and either a red or a green. It's an elemental elk and you can have this as your companion. So no card in your starting deck has more than one mana symbol in its mana cost. Um, of the same mana symbol, sorry. So this is really cool. And, you know, a lot of the cards I've talked about fit this, but, you you know, that Kirin thing that steals things, that you couldn't play that. But this card is wonderful because you can tap to add a white, a blue, a black, a red, and a green. This mana can't be spent to pay generic mana costs. So this section is all about making those five colors so we can activate our commander and then, you know, get the big buff. And Gigantha, having it in your command zone is always good because you always have access to it. You can pay three mana to put it into your hand. Amazing card. Similarly, we've got Fey Burrow Elder. Three mana, zero, zero with Vigilance. It gets plus one, plus one for each color of permanents you control. Tap, add one, uh, add each color among permanents you control. Add one mana of that color. So baseline, it just makes two mana because it's green and a white. But then if you have all the other colors of permanents, well, we're suddenly making five mana. Hey, we can use our commander's ability. Woohoo! Then there's Crystal Quarry, a land. You can tap it for a colourless, or you can pay five and tap it. Add a white, a blue, a black, a red, green to your mana pool. So you're getting that mana. Yes, it is technically costing you six mana because you're tapping this land and then five other mana sources to make it. But it gives you the exact mana requirements you want. Then there's Balloon Tender, two mana for an Elf Druid. It's green. Tap for each colour among points you control. Add one mana of that colour to your mana pool. Exactly the same as the Faber Elder, except it doesn't grow as you get that mana. And it costs three mana, so uh, two mana. <laughs> two mana. It's a fantastic card, will absolutely win you games. And it's just, you know, tap, activate our commander, plus five, plus five, hee hee hee. Then a couple of different ways to make the five color mana. Composite golem, six mana for a four, four. Sacrifice it, add white, blue, black, red, green to your mana pool. So yes, you're going to be sacrificing this in, you know, six mana to make five mana, not that good in the end, but you can play it one turn, the next turn, use it, and then you've suddenly accelerated by five mana for that turn. So it could really end up winning the game. Then Chromatic Aura is slightly different take on this. Seven mana, you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color, and it taps for five colors. So that is technically the five mana that we need and it makes us allow it allows us to use any mana to pump into our commander and we can tap it and pay five 
draw a card for each color among permanents you control. So having all those permanents is really essential. Then there's Channel the Suns, not a good card in any way. Four mana for a sorcery. Add a white, a blue, a black, a red, a green. Da -da 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 to your mana pool. I'll stop this now. Uh, the musical section is over. But this is, you know, a card that you might want to play if you're on a budget. It allows you to get those five colours easy. And that brings me on to number two. At number two, we've got Legacy Weapon and ways to use those five colours of mana that we've made. Seven mana, Legendary Artifact. Pay a white. Oh, God, I'm not singing it. But pay one of each. Remove target permanent from the game. If Legacy Weapon will be put into your grave from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. So a nice bit of mill, uh, anti-mill tag. But this can just absolutely hose your opponents. You can just pay that five mana to exile lands, just start working on their land base, and then they're going to cry. But if we've got five colors of mana, let's cast five color spells. Corona False God is a great one. Six mana, five, five with haste. Begin of each place, upkeep that player untaps Corona False God and gains control of it. Not that great, but when it attacks, creatures of the type of your choice get plus three, plus three until end of turn. Let's choose Spirit. Hey, our spirits are magically buffed. And you know, it's a big attacking threat. Then we've got Chromantico. Five mana for a 4-4, four, four. Mantico, not Mastico. Masticos are the things that try and kill themselves, I think. Bestow, seven mana, which means you can cast it as an aura onto a creature. Flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, and lifelink. Enchanted creature has plus four plus four and has flying, first strike, vigilance, trample, and lifelink. That's really good to put onto our commander. Seven, seven baseline with all those abilities, and then we can buff it even more. So we're going to get in for tons of damage. And then there's Genju of the Realm, playing into the Spirit Tribal. And, you know, the Kamigawa references. Five mana for an Enchant Land. Legendary. Pay two, Enchant Land becomes a Legendary. Eight, twelve. Ooh. Spirit with Trample until end of turn. It's still a land. Whenever Enchanted Land is put into a graveyard, you may return Genju of the Realm from your graveyard to your hand. So, it's, it's not good in any way, really. But it fits so flavorfully. And it's just so cool. And look at, he's just vomiting the sort of worldly essence onto that big orb. <laughs> anyway, the secret god of the tree is green, but it has a flip side. Three mana for a one fall with vigilance, add one mana of any color. So a nice bit of ramp that gets you to any color you want. Other legendary creatures you control have vigilance and tap, add one mana of any color. So our commander can now attack in combat with vigilance and then post combat main phase, tap for mana. So a really great card in general. But the flip side of it is the Prismatic Bridge. One of every colour. A legendary enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature or planeswalker card. Put that card into the battlefield and rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Just constant value. Just churns out all the best creatures in your deck. Wonderful. Then there's Ramos Dragon Engine. A dragon. So dragon spirit. <laughs> Flying. Whenever you cast a spell, put a 1-1 counter on it for each of that spell's colours. Remove five 1-1 one -one counters on from it, add a white, a white, a blue, a blue, a black, a black, a red, a red, a green, a green. It was slightly different, so I went for the sing. To your mana pool, activate this ability only once each turn, so that's two activations of our commander just for casting the card that we want to cast anyway. Wonderful card in the deck. And that brings me on to number one. So I've not really talked about the fact we can give things indestructible, and this is what this section's all about. Nevenril's Disc. Four mana for an artifact. It enters the battlefield tapped. Pay one and tap. Destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So the interesting thing about this is, you know, if this was made now, it would be tap, pay one, sacrifice it. But the clause on this, it's not a cost to sacrifice it or destroy it. The destroying is part of the ability's resolution. So what this means is when you activate this, it destroys itself, but if it's indestructible, well, it doesn't, does it? So this is a great card. Uh, you just constant board wipes. Yes, it'll kill our commander unless we can give our commander indestructible, but we're going to be able to just generate so much value by destroying everything and keeping ourselves alive, or at least our board wipe machine. Similarly, there's Magus of the Disc. 4 mana, 2-4, and ends the battlefield attack. Pay 1 and tap, destroy all artifacts, creatures, and enchantments. So if this is indestructible, well, it's just a board wipe for everything, every single turn. So much value. It's such a great card. Human Wizard. I love it. 
Then there's Nova Blast Worm. Seven mana for a worm. Whenever it attacks, destroy all other creatures. So with this, we can keep this alive and something else using our commander's ability. Yes, again, our commander will die, but I'd use our commander more as a, you know, a, a combat trick maybe. And then after we've sort of used the trick, we can start attacking with it. So really cool card. And, you know, look at its coils. There's just light pouring out of them. Then there's Boom Pile. Bit of randomness for us. Four mana for an artifact. Tap. Flip a coin. If you win the flip, destroy all non-land permanent, including itself. But if it's indestructible, obviously it doesn't destroy itself, and we can keep flipping another day. Are you going to win the flip? Well, it's 50-50, isn't it? Then here are a couple of cards that are on a similar sort of axis. Tranquil Grove is a two-mana enchantment. Pay three, destroy all other enchantments. Just absolutely decimate the board of enchantments. It's really cool. It's really good. You know, if you're not playing that many enchantments, which we're not, you know, Prismatic B Bridge, you know, Manticore, things like that. But most of the time, we're not going to have too many enchantments. So playing this, you can just absolutely ruin someone's day. Similarly, Mycotin Lattice can just ruin everything. Six mana for an artifact. All permanents are artifacts in addition to the other types. All cards that aren't on the battlefield, spells and permanents are colorless. Players may spend mana as though it were mana of any color. So... Bit of mana fixing, that's why we're playing it. No, the real reason we're playing it is because it makes everything artifacts. And so, if we destroy all artifacts, well, we destroy everything, don't we? Except for whatever we've given Indestructible to. And one of those ways to destroy all artifacts, a classic bane of progress. Six mana for an elemental. When it enters the battlefield, destroy all artifacts and enchantments. Put a 1-1 one -one counter on bane of progress for each permanent destroyed this way. So, not only does everyone not have anything, apart from us, we have, you know, whatever our commander's kept alive, and then an absolutely massive bane of progress. But, you know, no one has anything. We can just swing in. You've won the game, basically. And it's just a simple two-card combination. And those are my top five cards for this hopefully real card. I'm not sure if it is. Uh, maybe it is. Let's hope. <laughs> or else I've made a video for nothing. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please do like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.